this shouldn't be in here. That's, that's not appropriate. That That's for sexy time. <laughs> my channel. I am Adorkable Rachel and it's time once again for another episode of Rachel Remembers where I remember something from my childhood and possibly yours so let's just hop into it. So today children we are going to be talking about the ring. <laughs> no not that type of ring. I am talking about the horror classic the ring. Girl, you are so hyped on a Red Bull right now. I know! But stepping forward a bit, you probably heard that there is a movie coming out this week called Rings. This is actually meant to be a sequel to the 2002 film The Ring and the unfortunate sequel The Ring 2, but the second film was an unfortunate disappointment and completely pointless, so we're not gonna touch on that today. Sorry. I actually remember when a couple years back Rings was actually gonna be called The Ring 3D because it was obviously gonna be shot in 3D. Okay, first things first, I really wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for not going down that route. The Ring 3D sounds gimmicky enough, and I think the filmmakers knew that we don't need to put this movie in 3D. We don't need that kind of gimmick. It's not needed. It's about horror. It's not about things going like in your face. That's not what the ring stands for, damn it. Woo, I am really hyper. But seriously, even if the movie coming out this weekend does happen to be bad, which I'm kind of betting it will. At least you didn't put it in 3D, so I give you huge credit for that. Not like Paranormal Activity Ghost Dimensions. Stupid, stupid people. What happened to you, Paranormal Activity? What happened to you? So anyway, let's talk about the original movie. The Ring was released in 2002 and was a remake of the Japanese horror classic Ring, or as we Americans like to call it, Rango, which in turn was based off a best-selling book. The Ring was actually the first American remake of a Japanese horror classic, and that actually paved the way for even more J-horror remakes such as Dark Water, The Grudge, Pulse, and One Miss Call. But The Ring is actually the OG and to this day is the only one out of all the J-horror remakes to actually get positive response from critics and audiences, and deservedly so. The basic story of The Ring is that there's this woman named Rachel played by Naomi Watts, who hears a rumor about a videotape that can supposedly kill you seven days after watching it. Upon finding the tape, and of course watching it, like you do, Rachel goes on a bit of a mystery solving journey to find out where it came from and if she can stop the curse. She soon finds out that the tape was created by an evil little girl named Samara, and it literally becomes a matter of life and death for Rachel, and whether or not she'll be able to find Samara before it's too late. So I did see this movie when I was a freshman in high school, and me and my whole entire family went and saw it which is actually kind of weird looking back on it because I don't think in the history of ever has my family seen a horror film together in the theaters. But I don't know, that supposedly happened. And back in early 2002, before the movie was even announced, apparently the cursed video in the movie was played a lot on television without any context as kind of a way to get people talking about the tape. I don't remember seeing it anywhere, but I guess if that happened, it was kind of a clever way to get the weird images into people's heads. But then when we found out about it a couple months later, they actually showed ads on TV of people saying that they just saw it and it was literally the scariest movie that they had ever seen. And to be honest, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to see this movie because at that point I had always been freaked out by horror films. But for whatever the reason, just the imagery and seeing the ads, it just really intrigued me. And I didn't even know the plot about the tape or anything like that. My family just was like, let's go see this movie and we did and we went Went to the theaters and started watching it without any context as to what it was about and it was by far the scariest movie I've ever seen. I am not kidding, this is the scariest movie experience that I ever had. Some people have The Exorcist, some people have The Sixth Sense, some people even have Paranormal Activity, but nope, for me, it is the ring for the win for the scariest movie I have ever seen in my entire life. It wasn't enough that it took place in Seattle, which is where I'm from, and the main character's name is Rachel, and it was a really unpredictable movie, but also the surprise at the end of the movie, which I'm not gonna spoil, but that surprise, okay, that surprise was like so scary for me that I could not comprehend it. I ran out of the theater when that happened. Oh, hell no, oh, hell no, oh, hell no! I'm serious, it was just way too much for me to handle. And yeah, like after a minute of just taking a breather, I thought to myself like, okay, you can do this, you can see how this all turns out. So I walked back in the theater and I did see what happened. I, I, I saw it and it scarred me. Everything leading up to that in the movie was scary enough and then this happens. <laughs> And also, 
I'm not ashamed to say that besides having nightmares for weeks, it was really hard for me to also walk into rooms that had TVs in them. Seriously, if it was quiet and there was no one else around and there was a room with a TV that I had to go into, I was like, I don't know what to tell you. This movie messed me up that much. But I never had a problem watching a horror movie again after this one, so I guess it cured me of my fear or something. I mean, of course, I get startled at horror movies, but I don't get, like, scared and have nightmares anymore by movies. And obviously, this movie wasn't just scary to me because it was a huge box office success. And for a while, it was also parodied to death on TV, online, and movies, and it was also the basis of my personal favorite in the Scary Movie franchise, Scary Movie 3. And I'm also pretty sure that in the last 15 years, as far as horror movies go, it's, like, one of the few ones that got so much attention and so much of a following. Like, that one I'm Paranormal Activity, I feel like those are the two since 2000 that, you know, spark so much talk. Also, it's a little ambiguous what the title Ring means because some people think it's the ring of the phone after you watch the curse video, but then there's some who think it's the image that's on all of the posters. But according to the original author, the title Ring was always meant to be the cyclical nature of the plot. You know, the whole idea of legends, urban myths, rumors being passed around. That definitely plays a big part in the subtext of the story. And yeah, I could actually see a movie like that coming out now being pretty interesting because, you know, we've got like video sharing and social media that plays a big part in our society. But why do I get the feeling that's not going to be so cleverly used in the new film? So, there's actually been a lot of debate as to why this movie's had such a big following over the years, but there's been even more debate as to whether or not this is actually better than the original version. I mean, the Japanese film was highly acclaimed when it was released in 1998. It gained a lot of spin-off films, and apparently to this day is still the highest grossing Japanese horror film of all time. And apparently this franchise is so popular that they recently went Freddy vs. Jason on our ass because they actually released a The Ring vs. The Grudge type of movie in 2016. What? The original was definitely good. It had nice pacing, there's a lot of tension, and a lot of the inspiration comes from the Japanese culture's idea of death and ghosts, but mixed in with modern technology, i.e. the cursed videotape. And don't get me wrong, I do really love the Japanese version too, and in some ways it's really hard to compare them, but if I really had to choose, yeah, the remake's the better movie. I mean, if you tried to watch the two movies side by side, the visuals in the remake are just so much more disturbing. The atmosphere alone looks cold and grimy and creepy. We have the cursed videotape, which could be considered silly on paper, but the way they talk about it and show us just what kind of unknown fear this idea can impact on the characters, especially with the unsettling score by Hans Zimmer and the horrific sound design, it just has this way of getting under your skin and in a really uncomfortable way. And also compared to the Japanese version, the plot was a little more coherent and, for lack of a better word, real. I know it's a ghost story, I know, but it, it, it felt like it could have happened! While it was clearly made to fit Western standards, and they did change a couple of the features for a broader audience, I still personally give huge credit that the basic elements of the plot were not changed and actually stayed faithful to the original story, right down to the surprise ending and the twist being the same, and yet still very effective. That surprise ending, though! <sighs> Again, I'm not gonna give it away, but it does teach a pretty important lesson about horror films. It's that part after the climax when everything's calm and you're back with your family and it just feels like everything is back to normal. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> nope. If you think for one second that you've reached a point in a horror film where everything is okay, it is definitely not okay. It is never okay. At least not in a good horror film. In good horror films, nothing is ever right at the end. I am saving you a lot of grief for the next time you watch a horror film. If it feels like everything's okay, then either something's about to go down, or you just watched a terrible movie. And something else, of course, I have to give this movie huge credit for is that there's really not that many jump scares in it. I mean, of course it goes without saying that there are way too many horror movies out there with way too many jump scares that kind of shock you for a second, but they usually don't actually serve the story. However, The Ring actually does rely on atmosphere and tone more than anything to set the mood. And while, of course, there are some jump scares, they actually do serve the story and they stick with you. Also, as you may notice, there's no gore either. And don't get me wrong, there are some good movies out there that have some good gore scenes. But I feel like, again, there are a lot of movies out there that just kind of rely on gore and we're supposed to think that that alone is scary. But that doesn't always work. And 
And sure, there are some mutilated corpses in this movie, but they are pretty quick and actually leave an image more than anything. But the point I'm trying to make is that you don't always need chopped up bodies to create an impression. And while of course this movie is definitely not the first to rely on the audience's imagination to get the scares going, it definitely paved the way for that becoming a lot more popular. Just the whole, like, fear of the unknown element, that finally became a lot more popular after this movie. Again, can you say paranormal activity? And another thing that actually did a pretty good job of driving these elements was the characters and their motivations. I mean, look at Naomi Watts' character. She's not the most put together person, but we actually do take the time to get to know her and see her relationship with her son and her family. And we understand why she tries to find out this obscure mystery. Oh, and we understand what the stakes are because, well, I didn't mention it, but we actually saw in the beginning of the movie what this cursed video can do. And after seeing that, every part of the movie thereafter is like seeing a puzzle come together. We start to see where the video came from, what the different elements on the tape mean. There are, of course, some stuff that remains unanswered, but with a scary intro and character motivations like that, it's not a surprise that we the audience get invested and want to see what it all leads up to. Plus, not gonna lie, it's pretty frightening to hear the voice of Lilo tell me I'm gonna die. Ohana means family. You don't want to hurt anyone. But I do. And also going back to high school, this is when I first started getting really interested in video editing, so I was at the time really drawn to the whole idea of a curse being imprinted on a videotape. And this movie came out at just the right time because really, VHSs were on the brink of obscurity. I, will I mean really, do you remember VHSs kids? Do you? Do you? And I was definitely a weird kid because a couple months later when I got the movie on DVD and was able to copy VHSs and stuff, I actually got the cursed video on a blank VHS tape and I put it on the shelf of a video rental store and just left it there to see if it would freak anybody out. And uh, hello. Well, let's just say that a week later it was not there anymore. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the original The Ring film and the kind of impression it left on me. And now we can finally get ready to see the sequel that has literally been in talks for over 10 years. And really, not a lot can be said about the marketing compared to the first one, but the posters all over Los Angeles from what I've seen have had the creepy image of Samara with her hair over her face and a tagline that just simply reads, first you watch it, then you die. So then why would I want to see this movie? To their credit though, they actually did recently release a viral video that's been going around showing a girl dressed as Samar crawling out of a TV in a store. And while I do think it's kind of fake, it's actually still really funny to watch. <laughs> oh! 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 However, the Japanese prank that was done way back when, years and years and years ago, I definitely think that one's real. honestly not holding up much hope for the new film, especially since it's been in production for years and the release date has been pushed back numerous times to avoid competition. But I mean, look at this clip here. Is Samara now bent on world domination or something? memories of the ring and the kind of impression that it left on me, which is a <laughs> pretty traumatic one. <laughs> but now my question this week is, have you guys seen the ring? Are you planning to see the one coming up this week? Did you watch the ring to prepare for it? Do you think that the trailer looks stupid? Did you see the viral video? What are your thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave your comments below. Be sure to like and share. And if you're new and like what you saw here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also be sure to hit that little bell button to get notified when new videos come up because I post new videos here every week. Bye, Dirk and Baddies. I'll see you soon. <laughs>